Number 10, if you look at what they're asking for here, we can tell that this is going to be a parabola because parabolas are the only ones that have a vertex, directrix, focal width. That only applies for parabolas. So that's why I know what kind of graph this is going to be. Now I can't tell very much about this in this form, so I have to do complete the square on this one again to get it to be in the, the proper form. What I'll do is I need to put the same variables together on one side of the equation. I notice there's a y and another y over here, so I need to keep both of those on the same side of the equation. So I'm going to do y squared plus 6y. And then what I'm going to do is also is I'm going to leave a little space here because I'm going to leave a space for the complete the square step that I'm going to do a little bit later. And then I'm going to move the 8x across the equal sign and I have 7 was already positive so it's a plus 7 here. So I'm just grouping the, the y's together, I leave them over there. Whatever ones you have two, two of those, that's what you're going to do the complete the square steps with. Over here we don't do, have to do complete the square. We complete the square with the 6 and what we do there is we're going to divide it by 2 and then square it. So divide that by 2 and we get 3. When you square the 3 you get a 9 and you're going to add 9 to both sides of the equation. So once we have it set up there where you have just the two y's on the one side, everything else on the other, complete the square steps. Again, divide that by 2, you get 3, square it, you get 9, make sure you add it to both sides of the equation. Here we're going to factor it. So I, uh, because we did complete the square, we know it'll be a y quantity inside. What goes here will be the when I divide that by 2, so 6 divided by 2 is 3, that's plus 3 will go inside there. Now over here I need to simplify this, I get negative 8x plus 16. Now we're almost done, we want to do one more step, and one more step will be to factor what you have after the equal sign. I'm going to factor out a negative 8 from there, and you'll get x, and then 16 divided by negative 8 is negative 2, this now is going to be the equation we're going to work with. So I can now erase this one. I'm going to put this up here. And this is what we're going to be working with to answer the blanks here. So I wanted to get it into, into that form. Now, with it in that form, you want to look at the different models that are provided. And you want to see which one matches uh, this formula. So if I look at the different models, I find that it matches this one. So I have 4a and then x minus h. Uh, so with it with here, since it matches, what that's going to tell me is that these values also must be set equal to each other. So this model, first of all, says that I have a parabola that's going to open up to the left. The model tells me that's, that's what it'll look like. I want to match up these, this part of the formula. Negative 4a is going to equal negative 8. And if I divide both sides by negative 4, I get a is positive 2. Now the a value is very important because I need to use that in order to graph it and be able to answer these uh, questions here. Uh, so the, the h and the k, I can get those directly from the formula. I just look back at the original one. Your vertex is opposite sign of negative 2, which is positive 2. Opposite sign of negative 3 is, uh, opposite sign of positive 3 is negative 3. So 2, negative 3 uh, will be the coordinate for the vertex. Remember that the x value has to come first. So an another common mistake is to write negative 3, 2 as the vertex, but remember x has to come first, so that's why we're doing that. So we don't need this model anymore since we know that. We know the a value is 2, so I can erase that so we can get some space here for uh, the graph itself. And so now what we'll do is the, the graph. First thing you want to do with the graph is to plot the vertex. That's 2 and negative 3. Now our a value is 2, so to get the focus we move the A in the same direction that it opens up. The vertex has to always be inside the curve. So because it opens up to the left, that's the direction I'm going to go to get my focus. So I go two places to the left and I get the focus. I want to go two places behind it. My A value is 2. That's why I'm counting out 2 in this case. If I go 
the opposite direction, that's going to give me my directrix. My directrix always runs behind uh, the parabola, so it runs down there. That's enough now to answer what the focus and directrix is. Focus is going to be at 0, negative 3. I can read that directly from the graph itself. And your directrix, the equation for that is x equals 4. Don't forget to put and x equals there because you need an equation of a line. So you need to have x equals. Now the last thing we're going to do is the focal width. Now the focal width uh, is actually always going to be the absolute value of this number that's in front of the parentheses. So that focal width is just going to be 8 in this case. And so because of that, we're going to, from the focus, which is here, we've got to go, we're going to split the 8 in half and go going four going up and four going down. So that's basically how wide the parabola is at the focus. That's what it's asking for for focal width. We're gonna go up from the, from the focus. We go up four and we go down four. And we need to put these points on the graph because that's gonna tell us how wide it is. So you need to make sure that you, you plot those so that way the graph is more accurate. So now the graph is the parabola is going to come down through here and go out like that. And we know that the distance from here to here is 8. That's what it means by focal width. We have our, our vertexes right there. It opens up to the left because of the formula.